in my portion forever. God is, oh, yes, see in my portion and my portion forever. My heart was wounded, my heart was wounded, was pricked in my brain, in my Nevertheless, nevertheless, forever who else in heaven down on the earth my desire is to be with thee God is the strength of my heart and he gives my portion forever into this worship experience. Welcome to the Trinity Baptist Church worship service. Welcome to all of you that are here in person and those that are worshiping with us online. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those that take refuge in him. And that's what we came to do this morning, to take refuge in him. Take refuge in him. We just thank God for all that he's done for us. And at this moment, we're going to quiet our hearts and go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we come this morning with thanksgiving on our hearts and praise on our lips. Lord, we thank you for being God Almighty. We thank you for sitting high, for looking low. We thank you for how you kept the angels all around us this week, and you kept us from hurt, harm, and danger. For that, oh God, we say thank you. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to see a brand new day, a new day with new mercies and new grace. We say thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for how you loved us so that you sent your son, Jesus, that we might have that right to the tree of life. We thank you for how you loved us so much in our mess that you still forgive us. Lord, we say thank you this morning. We ask you, oh God, that you will just come in and saturate our hearts and our minds that we may be able to hear a word from on high. We ask that you would give us that agape love that runs from heart to heart and from breast to breast, that we may be the church you are calling us to be. Lord, we ask that you continue to lead us and continue to guide us and continue to direct us, God, because we can't move without you. Lord, we thank you for what you've already done and what you will do. Lord, we just thank you for everything. And right now, as we come into this worship experience, have your way, God. Yes. Holy Spirit, saturate us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, that all that we say and do will be to your glory yes. and to your honor, because you are so worthy. Yes. This is our prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are happy for another opportunity to praise and worship God. We ask that you continue to pray for one another. Please pray for Diggonist Betty Brown, Diggonist Clara Woody's mother, Sister Rosie Upshaw, Brother Tyrone Gresham, and Sister Stephanie Braxton, as well as those that I didn't mention by name. Please pray for those families who are in a period of bereavement because we know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Reverend Sledge and the Green family would like to say thank you to Pastor James and all of the Trinity family for your acts of kindness shown to them in the passing of Brother Willie Green Jr. Reverend Paul Mallory and the family of Adele Garner extends their thanks to the Trinity family. There are not enough words to express their heartfelt thanks for the sympathy love, and support you have extended to their family during that difficult time. Please join Pastor James for Bible Study Weekly at 12 noon on Facebook Live and on our conference call number. Also join us for church school every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Thanks for your donations to our young people. You donated, donated over $2,300. To God be the glory for their trip to the National Baptist Deacons and Deaconess Convention in Columbia, South Carolina. They will be leaving at 4.30 in the morning. I will be here to meet them and greet them and pray with them as they travel down to Columbia, South Carolina. So your job this week is to pray for traveling mercies and to pray that they will experience God like never before. So we are thankful for what you've donated. It covered all of their fees, all of the rooms, and even for the Greshams to travel as well. So we say to God be the glory. Amen. 
Next week, we have two blessings that we're going to celebrate today. One is that Mrs. Elizabeth Francis, the mother of Sister Louise Francis, will turn 102 years old tomorrow. She is worshiping with us today. Please stand. Happy birthday in advance. Look at God. Look at God. Amen. 102 years young. To God be the glory. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Amen. Nobody but God. The second blessing we're going to celebrate real quick is that on Tuesday, Diggin' Helen Cowens and Pop, Brother James Cowens, will be celebrating 53 years of marriage. Stand up. To God be the glory. Amen. Old people used to say, God is a keeper. God is a keeper, okay? We, we see the evidence all around the Trinity family that God is a what? A keeper. Amen. Amen. The men's ministry had a blessed time yesterday at their second do-it-yourself mini workshop. Reverend Bonner did an excellent job on home repair and remodeling. And you know, when I saw that toilet on the top of the table, I said, they really about to go in and learn some things this morning, Okay. There were 32 participants. So mark your calendar for August the 5th. That's their next um, do-it-yourself workshop. And that one is entitled Do's and Don'ts of Electricity. And that one is going to be taught by Brother Calvin Jordan. So they are doing a wonderful work. We are proud of what they're doing and grateful how they're helping us in the Trinity family. It's also time for our backpack and school supply drive beginning next Sunday. So bring your school supplies. There will be a bin in the narthex and one over in K.D. Turner, and we'll be accepting donations until August the 11th. Our church meeting will be held July 24th at 7 p.m. The youth of Trinity are planning a lock-in on August the 4th and 5th here at Trinity. It'll be for middle school, high school, and college students. Please have them sign up with me or a youth leader. The black-owned pop-up shop at the Trinity Family Life Center will also feature a car show with modern and classic cars hosted by the Richmond Metropolitan Antique Car Club of Virginia. This will occur on August the 6th. The Rites of Passage program for any young boys age 16 and older will begin accepting applications next month. The media ministry is sponsoring a movie night on July the 28th. The women's ministry have sold out their luncheon on the 29th, but we do have Women's Day on the 30th, on that um, July the 30th, so make sure you're here. And we have a guest preacher, Dr. Ruffin, that will be blessing us with her ministry. Reverend Moore and her team will be waiting for you today after service for those women who have not already signed up for the women's retreat. We are excited about this retreat and planning great things for you, and so make sure you see them after service. You will have until August the 31st to pay your fees. As always, you can give your tithes and your offering in several ways. Those here for in-person worship gave as you came in, you get that same opportunity as you exit. You can also use the GiveLify app or the online giving option on the website, trinitybaptistrva.org. You can also mail your contributions to the church office, Trinity Baptist Church, 2811, Findall Avenue, Richmond, Virginia, 23222. Now, the way in which humans waste things and disregard limited resources, has grown tremendously in recent decades. But God, who is the giver and the creator of all resources, has demonstrated a model of recycling from the beginning of time. When you stop and think about it, you will see that God is in the recycling business. All throughout the Bible, we see God repurpose 
and reuse lives who have unbelievable amounts of garbage in them. Noah was a drunk, David an adulterer, Jonah ran from God in rebellion, Paul was a murderer. The list goes on and on through our Bible genealogy of heroes of the faith. So our faith in Jesus offers us more than forgiveness of sins and eternity in heaven. God offers to every believer a new life here on earth, an exchange of the trash of your past for a repurposed future. Each and every one of us have baggage. Amen? Amen. We've been hurt. Others have hurt us. We've lived selfishly. We've been angry, we've been bitter, we've been hateful, we've been jealous, we've been prideful, but we've all done some things that we are ashamed of, and it's easy to change at the thought of the garbage that is unique to our own life trash can. Sometimes you don't want nobody to pull out the stuff that's in your trash can, amen? Especially if our trash is being pulled out to be recycled. Amen. So the enemy tricks us and keeps Christians in a vicious cycle of shame. But the good news that I want to share with you this morning is that God has a purpose and a redemptive plan, even with our trash. As God recycles our lives, he uses our testimonies to provide tangible references to the promises found in the scripture. Just as we are intentional about recycling physically here on earth, we must be equally diligent in allowing God to recycle our life garbage. Because every experience, every hardship and trial can be used to refine us, to encourage us, and to give him all the glory. So be intentional every day and allow God to recycle your trash and bring forth the treasure that's in your life. Those are some thoughts for you to think about this week. Amen. At this time, we will have a selection followed by scripture and prayer by Deacon James Watkins, and then the service of baptism in that order. so long and cold when in sadness you're the laughter that shatters all my tears when I'm all alone your hand is there to hold oh Jesus you are Jesus you're the center of my joy. All that's good, all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my life. Hope 
for all I do. I do. Jesus, you are. You're the center of my joy. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You are the music in the meadows and the streams. You're the voices of the children, my family and my home. You're the source and finish of my highest dreams. Oh, Jesus, you are. Jesus, you're the you're center, the center of, of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my content man. Oh. Church. Our scripture reading today is 2 Peter, 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 9. I will read for your hearing. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophet, and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. And by the word of God, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the, wor the world that then, has, that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is which the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, to us put, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's the word of God for the people of God. Let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And first of all, we say thank you, Father. Thank you for a good night's sleep and an early or late rise this morning, Father. But we thank you for waking us up. We thank you for being with us, Heavenly Father. We thank you for looking out for us when we don't even know we need to be looked out for. You care for us when we're not even awake, Father God. You keep our heart beating at night. You keep the breath in our body. And only you can do that, Father. And you know what? I don't want anyone else to do it for me. Only you, God. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for that breath that you put in our body last night. We just want to thank you for all you do for us, for our family, and our friends. Heavenly Father, we're entering in some dark, dark times right now. There's so much violence. There's so much killing. There's so many youth being damaged by a dysfunctional society, Father God, and by politics. 
Heavenly Father, please, please reach down and touch some of these folk because only you can touch them, Father. We could go up and hit them upside the head with a brick and it wouldn't do any good. But you can fix it, Father, and we ask you to fix it. We ask you to look out for our senior citizens, our sick and our shut-in, and our membership and friends and family who are behind prison walls, Heavenly Father. Please bless them as well because they need you as much as we do, Heavenly Father. Father God, we have special prayer and blessings over our pastor and his family. Keep him safe, Father. Keep him strong. Be with him as he walks through day to day. Guide him, gird him up when he needs to be, and make him strong. For as long as he's with you, Father, we know he's safe. And Heavenly Father, just thinking about where we are in the world, we're in trouble. We need you, Heavenly Father. We need you badly. Some folk don't even understand about you, anything about you. Some folk don't even know you. Reach out to those folk, Father. Wake them up. Shake them and wake them. Get the guns out of their hands. Put Bibles in their hands. Let them learn about God. Let them learn about what we are and who we are as a people. Father God, only you can do these things. And Father, just keep us, continue to heal us and keep us, Father. You know, it's like I'm hurting, but I'm feeling good. That's you, God. No one else can do that. You can make you hurt and feel good because you're hurt. That means you're here. And if we're here, we're blessed by you. And we're here under your mercy, Heavenly Father. So we ask you, God, please continue to work with us. Keep the family called Trinity in your forethoughts, Heavenly Father. Be with us, direct us, guide us, and lead us. Father God, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for all you do for our family and our friends. And Father, reach down and touch this world, Father, because we're in bad times and we need your blessings. In Jesus' name, I say thank you in the name of God. Amen. another blessed opportunity for baptism. I will be reading scripture, Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17, and Reverend Moore will be doing the prayer. And it reads, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. 
and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and holy God, it is again that we, your children, come before you this morning with thankful but yet humble hearts, thanking you, oh, Heavenly Father, for this young man yes. who has chosen to make Jesus his choice. Oh, God, we thank you for this candidate today. We thank you, oh, God, for your Holy Spirit that has touched him. And we come this morning just giving you all honor, praise, and glory. Yes. And Heavenly Father, this morning we ask that you will just continue to keep your arms of love and protection wrapped around him, O oh God. Even as he come out of the water today, O oh God, protect him. And we come this morning, Trinity, just asking you to encourage him, to embrace him and to just show him oh, all that Trinity has to offer, that he might be yet one more labor in the vineyard, oh God. Mm -hmm. So we said thank you this morning, you. and we ask, oh Heavenly Father, that you will just continue to walk with him from this day forward, meeting all of his needs, giving him guidance, giving him protection, and loving him and holding him in your precious arms. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Profession, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's give the Lord a hand clap and praise. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank God for another soul. Amen. At this time, we will have a thank you to Trinity from the COVID Grant Committee by Sister Jakira Saunders. And then we will have the right hand of fellowship. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Thank you, Reverend Wendy. Uh, my name is Jakira Saunders. I have been a member of Trinity Baptist Church for my entire life, basically. <laughs> um, but I'm so blessed to be here and see um, someone getting baptized on this day as I come on stage because I do truly remember that day of standing up as a, a young child in like elementary school and deciding that I wanted to walk the aisle and be with God um, and commit to, to him being um, a part of my life, so this is a, a blessed day for sure. Um, if we can pull up the slideshow. Um, so I am the program manager for the COVID bats or what is it, Trinity Baptist Church, Church combats COVID-19. Um, I have a background in public health, so I was excited to be a part of this project. Um, and we just want to thank uh, Virginia Department of Health. Um, we want to thank Trinity Baptist Church. Um, for presenting this grant to our community. And uh, we were awarded with $19,000, Trinity. $19,000 um, through, through this amazing time. I mean, it, it's been a rough time, right? And we can all say that to be able to be awarded $19,000 
to serve our community, to give back to our church. Trinity Baptist Church was awarded that. So all of you who are in here can go back to your community and say you were able to take a part in this, in this journey, in this commitment to um, combating COVID-19. So um, we delivered, um, let's see, 20 COVID vaccinations. To our community. We partnered with Walgreens for that, and also we partnered with an amazing woman who has her own clinic. Um, we also gave out 300 free lunches, um, and then we gave out about 300, 200 to 300 um, health education uh, processes. And so what that looked like is, you all, we came together. Uh, Reverend Wendy actually said, hey, can we get on a Zoom call and come up with a great plan so that we can get this information out into the community? We came together, we wrote up a plan and decided we were going to do a lunch and learn for mostly every month starting in um, September of 2022 up into a couple of months ago. So I just want to do some slideshows and pictures of exactly what we did. Our first event was um, in November of 2022. It was a health fair kickoff and it was so much fun. We had like 200 box lunches, healthy box lunches. They were really good from Apple Spice Junction if you've ever eaten there before. Um, and then we also had um, a fitness piece. We had a whole bunch of tables of just different health education, health education pieces from United Healthcare, hearing testing. Um, I think vision testing was also there. Um, and then just overall, again, health education, domestic violence, things of that nature. Um, the next month we had, um, I think that was in, I think, January or February. We can keep going. Those are some nice slides of everyone. Look at me, Reverend Wendy and Miss Diane. <laughs> Pastor James and his wife is there as well, right there in that, that first photo. Um, it was a fun time, y'all. And then there was a vision um, in that other, that other video, that other picture. Um, next slide. Yes, this is our second event. Um, and again, I said there was a woman who was able to provide health um, services to us. She gave us free vaccines, y'all. So we did not pay for the vaccines. She donated those vaccines to us, and we were able to host that in the Katie Turner building. That was a great time. Um, here are some more pictures of the committee, as well as some of the volunteers. We had security there as well, and everyone was welcome. So not only did we tap into Trinity, but we also tapped into the outside community because that's also what we wanted to reach, right? Our next one was in May, living our best life, My Life Matters. We also had a fitness piece there, um, and you can see Deacon Jackie was there. She was a part of the committee, had um, us on our toes and on point with keeping keeping things on track, Miss Cherry and her mom, my, me and my little daughter there, Miss Yolanda. Um, we had some presentations, once again, health related, talking about how to um, stay on top of your overall health when you're over the age of 45. Then our event in April came up with um, more of the youth, so cultivating safe spaces for youth. If there are any parents or any um, children even in the room, you know how important it is to have that conversation through the pandemic. I worked with children at the beginning of the pandemic and they talked about how much they missed their friends. So we were able to go to Hoshkis and communicate with them and open up a conversation and again, provide free healthy lunches as well. Um, our next event was in May and that was, um, let's talk about health and housing. Juan was there, he presented some amazing information about the housing crisis as well as talking about um, our overall impact as it relates to the housing crisis. And then our final event was our June closeout, which was amazing. We had bio scans where they literally check your entire body to see like um, if you have any type of deficiencies and literally tell you what you need more of, again, to combat any type of health things that we know we can work on, right? So this event was absolutely amazing. It was led by all of these members here um, in Trinity. If you guys want to stand up, the committee, please, we can stand up because it was an amazing time for me coming back from um, school, being able to be a part of this committee. Some amazing women, um, Deacon Jackie, Miss Cherry, Miss Cheryl, Miss Regina, Miss Yolanda, um, Reverend Wendy. It was a great time and we truly, truly enjoyed it. Miss Diane. Um, am I forgetting anybody? I, I really enjoy being um, a part of this committee. <laughs> and it was a great time. And here are the names right here. But um, if you were not able to make this, um, this Combat's COVID-19 event, just know we do have some other opportunities upcoming where we're going to tap back into the community. So just please be on the lookout on the announcements here, on the emails, on uh, social media, and things like that. But we really enjoy being able to touch our community and bring this forward. Oh, uh, Miss Vanessa, Miss Sheena, sorry, I wanted to name everybody, y'all. But um, thank y'all for allowing me to speak today, and I hope y'all have a blessed day. Thank you.
At this time, we have right hand of fellowship, so we will ask if there are any new members who have not gotten their right hand of fellowship. Is our young man dressed back out? Okay, if not, we will proceed with the song.
with this word. With this word. Teach us, instruct us. Teach us, instruct us. With this word. With this word. Encourage us. Encourage us. Inspire us. Inspire us. Empower us. Empower us. With this word. With this word. At this hour. At this hour. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It is done. It is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you as we take our seats to the glory of God. I want somebody to say, this sermon has my name on it. As we proceed, we will find out if that is or is not true. But I do believe that there is a common thread among all of us present today. And the common thread is every last one of us are sinners. I wonder if we all said amen. Amen. And the majority of us are sinners saved by grace. Say it with power, saved by grace. grace. And because this particular text speaks to the human condition, and since all of us are human, this message has my name on it. I'm going to read the scripture from two different versions, one from the old and familiar King James and the other from the Good News Translation. I want you to repeat after me the King James, but I want you to hear clearly the Good News Version of the Bible. I want you to just hear it, not repeat it. It comes from 2 Peter at the third chapter and the ninth verse. Listen to the glory of God. The Lord is not slow to do what he has promised, as some think. Instead, he is patient with you because he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants all to turn away from their sins. Repeat after me the King James Version. The Lord Lord is not slack slack. concerning Concerning. his promise. promise. As some men men count slackness, slackness. but he is long-suffering to us ward, not willing, that any, any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We want to reason with you at this hour with this thought in our mind. Somebody say the danger. Say it with power. The danger of not taking God seriously. The danger of not taking God seriously. You do know there's a danger. I don't know why my mind takes me at the beginning of this message to uh, something that the Holy Ghost didn't give me in the study. It was, it's a childhood reference. It's got to be 30 or 40 years ago. And it's about this weekly program that came on And it was a family. I think it was called Lost in Space. Some of you all are older as I am. (laughs) They were the Robinsons, weren't they? And they had a robot that, that protected them, did a lot of things. But one thing I remember, that robot would say, oh, listen to this. The little boy was named Will. And the robot would say, danger, real Robinson, danger. 
He would look around and there was, didn't seem to be any threat, but the robot knew what Will didn't know. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is that God knows more than we know. And if God says danger, you and I ought to get up on the edge of our seat because wherever there is danger, Satan is trying to knock us down. Am I telling the truth up here? So I want to ask a question. Is it possible that the world does not take God seriously? Even though God gives us warnings and promises in his word. However, the truth seems to be that many people do not take either the warning or the promise. Somebody's getting the message. Say it with power, seriously. This is not new. In the garden. That would just about be at the beginning. God told Adam not to eat from the tree of good and evil. Because the very day he did, he would die. Adam and Eve heard the mandate, heard with their own ears the commandment. But apparently, neither of them took God's word. God told Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh did not take God seriously only when he lost his son. At the arrival of the 10th plague, Pharaoh finally takes God seriously. God told Noah, build an ark. Because he was troubled by the sins of the people took Noah and his family many, many years to build that ark. But there were a whole lot of people who did not take God nor the threat of a flood seriously. And I want us to know that from where we are this morning, it's easy for us to look back at the people in the Bible and laugh. Laugh at the way they ignored God's promises of retribution. Promises of threats like floods and plagues and disease. But you and I in 2023 stay in our comfort zone. And we say to ourselves, we would not be so careless that we would ignore God. Really? What is the truth? The truth is that in 2023, we see the same situations that were going on in the Old and the New Testament. But things have changed. On a worldwide scale, we have all been affected in some way by COVID-19, the coronavirus. No longer than a few minutes ago, we were told of a ministry in this church that helped people with COVID-19. It's contemporary. Come on, talk back to me. And I believe everybody in here was affected, not infected, but affected. You may not have been infected, but somebody you know, and somebody you know died. Why? The medical community said that 200,000 lives were lost in this nation for no good reason other than people would not take the warnings, nor the necessary advice 
from the medical community seriously. I will never forget reading about how two brothers, one of them, both of them were what they call, I believe, uh, deniers. It's, 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 it, it's not a real disease. It's no more than a cold. Until the brother got the disease and died, and then the other brother ran, literally, to get his shot in the arm. All because they didn't take it. Say it loud. Now, as Christians, we have learned, some of us, to take God seriously. We know that if he promised a response to our upcoming ungodliness, that promise is going to show up. Am I talking to anybody? That promise is going to show up just as well as when my mama used to say, I'm not going to whip you today. But when I do, it will be for the old and some of us have mama like mine. And I was amazed as I was cringing under the switch. How does she remember all that stuff I did three weeks ago? But she reminded me, I told you, the old, y'all not praying with me. As Christians, we've learned to take God seriously. And the fact of the matter is, we do take him seriously because the Bible tells us so. Somebody say, what does the text teach? This text focuses on the idea of not taking God seriously or, and you can put it another way, taking God lightly. Second Peter was not about a threat of retribution from God. It was all about a promise from God. Christ promised he would return and establish his kingdom on earth. Peter told believers that many would not take God's promise seriously. So Peter prophesied that people will laugh and they will say since the beginning of creation, everything has been just about the same. Nothing has changed and they're going to laugh at the promises of God. But the verse that we read as text, the ninth verse, makes it clear. God is not slack. Not slack concerning his promises. What he says will surely come to pass. So let's take notice. To those of us who love the Lord, we have learned the hard way. Oh, come on, y'all. We've learned because our heads were hard. And God had to teach us in such a way that we would not forget. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And we have learned that all power is in his hand. And because we are true believers, disciples of God, disciples of Christ, we must take God seriously. Over many years, through ups and downs, through mountain peaks and low valleys, we have learned, sometimes to our dismay, but we have learned, sometimes our hearts were broken, but we have learned that it is important to take God seriously because he is the God of life, death, and eternity. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's 90% of the wax, all of it together. That just might be 100%. I don't know. But what I do know, he is the God of life, death, and eternity. 
And the first thing that the Bible says clearly is captured in Psalms 99.1. Because there have been things that we have learned along this weary journey. It says, the Lord is king and the people tremble. He sits on his throne above and the winged creatures and the earth shake. He's a great God. Everything that is happening in this world today, with all of its evil, with all of its wickedness, with all of its shame, with all of its immorality, God is still in control. God is still on the throne. We take his word seriously and we believe there is nothing beyond God's power. And as long as he's on the throne, everything going to be all right. I used to sing as a child in the children's choir, he got the whole world. Somebody been there, done that. The reason we learn to take him seriously because God is our strength. At the 46th Psalm, it makes it very clear. God is a very present. Say it, present. Help in trouble. Now, the emphasis on the word is present. That means right now. Present. God has not only helped us in the past, but he's present right now. Now, if you believe it and you ought to, because there is evidence abundant that it is true. He's present. He not only helped us in the past, but he's with us right now. Right now, God has provided. The fact that you woke up this morning, God has provided. The fact that you had a morsel to eat, God has provided. No matter whether you got on a bus or in an automobile, God has provided. And we have to thank God because he took his promise to restore us back to him so seriously that he did something unbelievable. He gave the world his only begotten son. And even though times and all that we face has changed. God has not gone back on his promise. He made that promise 2,000 years ago. God does not change. Seasons change. Feds change. Fashions change. But God does not change. God spoke this world into existence with purpose and plan. Order, intelligence, God has not changed. And because of it, we can stand on his promise. God proved himself. When the children of Israel marched around Jericho seven times, it seemed like it was a foolish thing to do. It seemed like it was illogical. It surely seemed improbable. Because it was God's will, it came to pass. Our God is still in control. And when God promises a blessing, it means that you better get ready and take him seriously, for a blessing is coming your way. I said he will provide. Provide what, preacher? If he will provide the things that are most important for our spiritual welfare and our physical welfare. Endurance. That's what we need. Endurance in the midst of adversity. God will provide. Patience. In the midst of conflict and confusion, God will provide. Support. 
in the midst of our own mess, God will provide. Hope in the midst of hardship. I said God will provide. Comfort in the midst of bereavement. Comfort in the midst of confusion. God will Go on and praise him right now by the clapping of your hands. God will. No wonder the songwriter wrote, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands has provided. Great is thy faithfulness to me. I don't know about you, but that's my testimony. He'd been mighty good to me. God gave us his word. He set in motion a series of events to send the Redeemer. He sent his son to deliver us. He promised whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son to show us the way. God promised to provide a way for us to have salvation. God promised. The promise was so serious that Jesus took God's promise, came down here and lived on earth for 33 short years allowed himself. Did you hear what I said? He allowed himself to be crucified on Calvary. Jesus took the resurrection so seriously that early Sunday morning he got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. And so I want to encourage everybody in the room, don't fall for coronavirus, coronavirus panic. God has taken care of you. It ain't over, but God has taken care of us. Am I right about it? God's promise, I will never leave you alone. I will never forsake thee. So I don't know about you, but all we are left to do is to walk by faith and not by sight. All that is left for us to do in the time of trouble, call on the Lord. He's the only one that can save us. He's the only one that can make a way where there seems to be no way. Am I right about it? He's the only one that can put bread on your table, butter on your bread, jam on your bread and butter. Nobody I said nobody, nobody but the Lord is able to provide. Is there anybody here that knows God will? Is there anybody here that God has blessed real good? Is there anybody here don't mind saying thank you? Don't mind shouting sometimes. Don't mind saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been good to me. Ain't God all right? I said, ain't God all right? Say yes. Say yes. Oh, any good. Do you love him? Then say, thank you. Do you love him? Then say much obliged. 
Do you love him? Then praise him by the clapping of your hands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is my rock in a weary land. God is my bridge over troubled water. And all I need is to take him seriously. Say it, take him seriously. And your life will be blessed far beyond your imagining. Ain't God all right? I said, ain't he all right? This same God who is to be taken seriously is the God who can save your soul, the God who can renew your spirit, the God who can forgive you. There's somebody in the room who thinks they've done something so dastardly, so bad, so shameful. How could God, his son, die? so he would forgive us of our sin. That's a mighty good God. And with that comes a mighty good deal. Those who love him and take him seriously get to live twice and die once. That's a mighty good thing. Ain't God all right? And so the doors of the church are open. Those persons who are on a digital platform looking, you can be saved right now. Right now, wherever you are. Front room, living room, bedroom, whatever room you are in right now, whatever place right now, God can save you and guarantee you Life beyond the graveyard. All you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. God bless you. We receive you. Come on, give God some glory. Somebody has decided to take God seriously. Every head is bowed. Our Father, there, there just might be someone I do not know who wants to come so bad, but the devil has put fear in their heart. Satan has placed distraction in their mind. Move it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And let them know that they are about to make the best decision they have ever made in this life. Move on that spirit and bring that person forward in Jesus' name. Not to join this church, but to join Jesus. Then they will decide what church they want to be discipled. But join Jesus right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on and give God some glory. Give God some glory. He's a mighty good God. Be ready. Very good. We're going to ask you to be seated. We were not able to do the right hand of fellowship in its appropriate place, but we're going to do it now in Jesus' name because we are so glad that somebody came to Christ and somebody decided to join this church. Ain't God all right? God bless you, my friend. Come on up, come on up. This is a fine young man right here. 
Emmanuel, right? Amen. Somebody say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, this is your church family. These are the people who you will be working with in God's vineyard. I'm going to tell you something about this young man. I want him to look at me. I have a ritual before I come in these doors. I've always had it, but if I do it at church, invariably somebody is going to knock on that door. And when I come here on Sunday morning, I got one thing on my mind. That's worship, praise, and preaching. And so I have a little place, I ain't going to tell you where it is, that I park. It's less than a minute from that door. And so one day, this young fella comes down the space. I'm, I'm reading my sermon. I'm praying. And I saw him. He saw me. He turned around. He went on up the street. And then he came back, and I said, hello, how you doing? He said, you Reverend James? I said, yes, I am. He said, well, I'm going to church. So he came on, and I don't know if he joined that Sunday or the Sunday after. But this young man has an anointing on him. And the devil is not happy that a young African-American male has decided to follow Jesus. Ain't God all right? Somebody shout hallelujah. This is what we want you to know. This is called, in the Baptist tradition, the right hand of fellowship. What it means is this, that from my hand to your hand, from the chairman of the diaconate, and from the president of the deaconess, representing the whole church family, from my hand to your hand, at that moment, their hand, deacon his hand, you are a full-fledged member of the Trinity Baptist Church. Ain't God good? We love you, and we want you to come work with us in the vineyard. Come on, let's praise God. I want you to do me a favor. Many of us have forgotten, but I'm going to remind you, when we first start coming back to church, when the government and the CDC says it's okay, wear your mask, that, that's been a little while ago, we said, and that we asked God, we asked him with all of our heart and all of our might, we asked him to help us to recover from all the stuff we had to go through with COVID. Is anybody listening? Yeah. Recover. Come back to do what we used to do. Because COVID cut all of that in half. There are signs that Ray Charles could see that we are on our way back. Is anybody happy about that? Yeah. I said we're on our way back. And once we get to the place of where we were, then we have to launch forward into the future that God has prepared for us. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to thank you for helping us get back to where we were. And we are going to get there, and we're going to get there this year. And then we're going to move forward in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise. Something that is currently new in our worship that we haven't done before, but we're going to do it from now on. 
until the Holy Ghost changes my heart and my mind. Before we leave out of here, we do an affirmation. Somebody say affirmation. affirmation. If you affirm something, it means that you say yes. This, I concur, I agree. Somebody say affirm. And so what we have the audacity to do under the unction of the Holy Spirit, because you can't do this on your own. You must have the Holy Spirit guiding you. Because we don't know what going to happen Monday morning. But we are going to affirm what we want God to do with us. So I want you to shout it. This week, I will prosper. As my soul, As my soul prospers. prospers, this week, this week I, will I will receive mercy and blessings, and blessings from, above. from above. This week, this week I, will I will be in good health and I will prosper. And I will prosper. This week, I will be successful. Everything I put my hands to will be blessed. Every day I will keep my mind right. Every day I will keep my heart right. Every day I will call on the God of my salvation. And he will give me, me everything, 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 everything I need. I need. God, God will bless my day. Bless my day. God, God will make a way. Make a way. God, God will hold me in the palm of his hand. In, in Jesus' name, Jesus. It, shall. it shall, it shall. Come to pass. Come to pass. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Give God some praise. <laughs> Might every head be bowed. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, may he rest and rule and abide with each one of you henceforth now and forevermore. Might we all say, Amen. Amen. God bless you and go in peace. Look to see you for the Noonday Bible Study on Facebook.